Hello. Pleased to be open game. Hello. Yes, here we are. Look, the game exists. Signs of the Sojourner. It's very good. We got, I think, three, three and a half trips in to this run. So, don't have my arm brace. We'll have to hand brace. We'll have to get that when I do a break. Hello, the kids are asleep. It's time for more story time with cards. Very good cards. I'm going to slide over this way a little bit as long as I can still have my microphone so that people can hear me. I need to futz with this thing so that I can make it be more like this. I will put it more in the way of the camera, but it will mean that I can be a little bit more this way and have this still angled the way that I like it. A streamer's job, tweaking the setup, is never done. So, we continue story. And we are in Aldhurst. Lars. So, Aldhurst. Although there doesn't appear to be much damage from the recent earthquake, most shops in the plaza are closed. Some locals stand at the street corner, eyeing the tents and makeshift shelters that have gone up as refugees trickle in. So let's take a look at our thing again. We, we want to bring home scrap. We have some non-perishable food. We have the locket. This is our non-perishable food. I guess this is sort of food. It's sort of not food. It's candy. Salem, Tosudo. All right, you're going to be harder to... Well, what's my deck look like? I have... I have only this for diamonds. I do have... A decent number of squares. So actually, let's talk to you first. Lars is looking pretty rough. Destitute. He wears a couple of layers of clothes, but clean but stained with old mud at the cuffs and knees. He looks like he's had to choose between what to keep and what to leave behind two or three times over. You look new. Did the weather bring you to Aldhurst? I haven't been here long either. So, I guess this is my option. Back off a little. At least now there's an option to uh, to have him to match what he uh, wanted from me. So this is prepare. So let's draw one of these just in case that's what he does. No. Well, now I don't have a square to meet him, unfortunately. Well, this conversation may not go well. Um, I guess I'll do this because it'll let me prepare again. Accommodate. You here to gawk? Is this fun for you? Okay. Bye, Lars. Oh. Sad time with Lars. Elaborate. Well, one of those would be good. Let's take this. And get rid of, I guess, this. I don't know that I've ever had a successful conversation with Lars. Um, Stone Cold, Salem drives his shovel into the earth and leans up, uh, upon it as you draw near. He's playing it cool, but anyone can see the sweat glistening on his brow. Wonderful Aldhurst wasn't hit by the by recent events as his neighbors, but that's not to say it's gone untouched. Well, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to do with you there, bud. Yeah, I'm pretty tired. I'm 
not the unreasonable one here. Vagrants are trying to steal my precious, precious pogey. I don't know about that. I think maybe you are projecting. Nope. You're just going to be a, a, a twerp. You're standing a little too close to my kimchi. It's making me nervous. Perhaps it's time for you to move along. Yep, I guess I'm just real tired. Blissfully oblivious to the casual callousness of his words, Salem returns to digging his hole. You won't be offering a helping hand. I don't know, I guess I'll just keep this one of these. I don't know that I will have a, a better time with Tosudo. Bits and pieces. Tosudo's expression looks extra puckered. You suspect he's been toughing the present situation out on his own. And if you had to take a guess, his diet is probably not great. I know what you're thinking. Where am I going to sit and get quality pickles at a time like this? Good news, I'm still open for business, even in these most trying of times. I don't exactly remember all the voices I did, but, you know, we'll just do what we can. Nope, just effed. Well, I'm going to play this and hope that he can connect with that. Hmm. You would do well to pay attention. No one is more prepared for the, in the face of disaster than a man of science. Nope. I've spread myself too thin. It suddenly occurs to me that I'm getting too old for this. Well, I've got that. One successful uh, exchange. You see, just as I predicted, Alters experienced the present calamity only in the mildest of terms. That's why I decided to base my business here in the first place. All very scientific, you see. Just between you and me, I'm not exactly thrilled about all the freeloaders who have appeared to sponge off of Alterst's good fortune. Oh no, how dare refugees try to come to a place with intact social services in order to get, like, food and water. Nope. Alright. Screw you, you're a jerk. Is that vagrant Lars still lurking around out there? I'm certainly spying on me and my pickles! You ought to bid to suit a farewell before all that pickle talk and conspiracy theories start to pucker your brain. As usual, he does not disappoint in either the flavor or colorfulness department. Well, let's... trend back toward circles and triangles. I, I just have... I really only have two of these? Jeez. Alright. After a long trip, it's always good to be back home, even if Bartow is still looking a little extra rough around the edges. And the dog is not around. Elias is gazing through the skylight, hoping to see a silver lining. Material concerns. Elias is behind the counter, frothing some milk. He's standing next to a sign that says, Enjoy our new dining terrace! Oh, I didn't get raw materials. Couldn't find anything. Hey, welcome back! Any luck finding those building supplies while you were gone? Nope. Everything went poorly. Nope, you don't have anything for that, so... I guess I'll keep on being accommodating. No such luck, eh? I understand. It's rough out there, buddy. My aunt is worried about the damage. She says people like to drink their coffee al fresco, whatever that means. But I think people are going to see a hole in the ceiling. Yep. Um... That worked. I 
won't be able to keep the wool over their eyes forever, you know, but people do still need their coffee, one way or the other. Material concerns. Elias pours you a complimentary cup of joe, then gets back to misspelling customers' names on their coffee cups. You didn't bring scrap, home scrap for the repairs. I know, I know. Um, let's... I am spread very thin. Let's go... Trying to think about which, like, where do I want to go on this last run, and how do I prepare, prepare myself for that? All right, let's do this. Dink, 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 dink. Not a bad run. Fatigue goes away. Hey, it's this friend. Samuel bursts through the door, big, as cheer big and cheerful as ever, seeking to collect any non-perishables he found for his co-op. No less than three bear hugs later, he's barreling back out to the roadhouse, off to cook a feast for any bar towers in need. So we did get uh, non-perishables for him. Samuel bought up the licorice for the roadhouse food co-op. Samuel bought the red wine to stock at the roadhouse. Samuel bought up the roasted crickets for the Roadhouse Food Co-op, and the school teacher bought the painting to decorate her classroom. Home. When you close your eyes, you can hear the grating of gravel under your tires and the feel the fresh air on your face. That can mean only one thing. It's time to head out. I'm not super into Ramir, honestly. Um, let's talk to Elias first. Deadline approaching. Elias is sitting on the curb outside your shop, hunched over with his head in his hands. He looks worried. Nadine's going to be making the call on the caravan soon, and I've got to be honest. I'm worried about Bartow. Believe me, I'm no fan of Nadine's, but I w without a steady influx of goods from the caravan, things could get real bad around here. Ghost town bad. I wish I could trust her to do the right thing, but what's she going to prioritize? The needs of the caravan? The needs of this town? Or the needs of herself? Even if she wanted to help, can she really? With the Rokers breathing down her neck? You have one of these. End your turn and prompt the other person to play two cards. If you have the card, the listen to card. The listen card. Okay, so you have listen. Hey, listen! Um, redraw your hand and accommodate. Just going out on a limb here, but I think our little town is not at the top of the l of her list. <laughs> hey, listen, haunts me. <laughs> Sorry. And the fate of your mom's store certainly isn't on her mind either. That much I can guarantee. I mean, we're hunt we're hurting for products as it is. What will happen if you lose access to the caravan completely? Well, I don't have. Here it's the right hand symbols of the previous card. Nope, that's not what I need. Um, this will go back to the last match, right? Okay, it works because there's a, a back backstop. Never thought I'd say this, but I think Nadine, Nadine may be a necessary evil. I guess that's why your mom put up with her for all those years. Deadline approaching. He takes a deep breath, trying to calm his rattled nerves. You sit down next to Elias and put your arm around his shoulder. All right, let's take a listen. 
makes other people uh, play cards. It's a surprise inspection. Nadine pushes open the door to your store and steps inside. She scans the empty shelves, taking in every inch of the place with discerning, analytical eyes, before gesturing for you to join her on the stoop. Your store. Is it always like this? I won't say I'm impressed, but your inventory is not the worst. Yeah, accommodate all day. Um, well, I guess I can do this, right? And then show me your hand. I'm not making any decisions until the end of the month, but if you don't turn things around, I'm afraid we'll have no choice but to drop Bartow from our route. I wish it wasn't the case, but the Rilkers are able to cause a lot of trouble for us. Nadine shakes her head as she heads down the street, an ominous sign for the looming decision ahead. Ominous. Do, 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 do. Well, these are all just not as good as what I have. I guess we'll switch one of these for accommodate. I don't, Ramir, I don't uh, honestly care about you. Last trip. All right, so what's going on? No special of events, so let's just stick with the caravan. Off to Pachenko. Navigating the winding canyon roads is second is like second nature to you now, and you're able to appreciate the roadside sculptures and colorful architecture as you easily follow Nadine up to the plateau. Dog! Dog is good. Right, I will save talking for, for dog uh, till later. Isabella is helping someone move a chair into storage. Full circle. Fireflies dot the night sky, and brightly colored paper lanterns float toward the waning moon. The, cre the creation and destruction art show is a success for uh, Pachenko, but Isabella looks sad. Little bird, rumor spreads far and fast in close-knit communities. I can't help but worry about that time you've been sharing with Marcus. All right, I'm gonna open a soda. Just gonna try not to overflow, overfill my glass. Excellent here. I'm gonna take a sip to make it easier to not spill it. Sorry. I try, I've tried like seven or eight different brands of seltzers, and I hate all of them. Because I was thinking, oh, well, if I could find a seltzer that I like, then I could like maybe wean myself off of soda. I hate all of them. Some of them are less terrible, but I would be a far less happy camper if I were drinking those instead of soda. Like I drink Diet Pepsi, which is better in one in some ways, but I know aspartame is like theoretically has some other things that are bad. Um, no, don't need to accommodate here. I guess I will drop my hand. All right. Let's see your hand. I like Diet Dr Pepper. I have. I don't know that I've had a normal Dr. Pepper in quite some time. Your mom and I helped found the circle to help everyone. Unfortunately, people like uh, folks like Marquess only care about helping themselves. That's why your mom and Marquess not got, never got along, and why your mom left Pachenko in the end. We had another founding partner, but he left ages ago. I've heard rumors he's in Hara now. Perhaps you've heard the name before? It's an old city, abandoned when its water dried up. Hara isn't too far from here. The main problem is the neglected roads. Okay, now we have the road to Hara. Dr. Pepper cream soda, interesting. I can't help but wonder what your mom would think about getting wrapped up in the wrong side of all this ancient history. All right. Guess we'll do this, right? I 
Well, I'm sure your mom would remember what it was to be it was like to be young and headstrong. That's at least one thing you two have in common. Alright, one more go here. She found her own way, and I'm sure you will too. The road she walked had its share of bumps, but in this the end in the end it's the one she picked for herself. I suppose that's what matters. Okay. Ba, ba, ba. So chatter to that. And there you go. Well, no matter what happens out there, I know your mom is cheering you on, and so am I. Even if I worry about your choice of friends. Isabella gives you a resigned smile and a small, tired hug before taking her own leave of Pachenko. Oh wow, she's like leaving the city. It sounds like. Here's Marcus. A generous offer. Dancers in feathered costumes greet you at the entrance of Marquess's latest party. You try not to guess, inhale any glitter as you search for the host, who lounges careful, casually on a white sofa. You gotta watch out for that glitter. Oh, there you are. I'm not used to being disappointed, but I can't say I'm surprised. I'm very snooty. Loop. Loop. Everyone's lives are difficult in some way. Even I have to keep the creditors away from Pachenko's door. Your failure to keep Tomas around has made my job that much harder. You know, I almost envy the freedom of your dingy life on the road. No greater vision, no noble cause. It must be nice and easy. Yeah, I don't know about... I don't know about easy. Can't connect with trauma, eh? Well, that's not what I'm looking for. I guess I will redraw. If you don't want the circle's blessing, so be it. So for me, every action I take carries consequences. For Pachenko's sake, it's my cross to bear. Here's a bit of trivia. Your mother and I founded the circle. I didn't tell you before because I wanted to see what you were made of. I'm very fancy. I was hoping you'd be different, but you two are a lot alike, in a bad way. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have actual worthwhile matters to attend to. I'm very fancy. Marquess follows up her re uh, revelation with the suggestion to visit Hara if you wish to further unearth the past. Marquess has re rejected you from the circle. I did not especially want to be in the circle, so jog on. Dog! New friends, you turn away from one of the vendor's stalls to find Thunder has made friends with another pup! <laughs> 
Good dog. Thunder zooms around between your legs, overcome with excitement. Good dog. Okay, so we could go to Hara. <coughs> But we will have left the caravan behind. <coughs> well, I've never been, I don't think I've been to Hara before. I don't think I've met this character, so let's go ahead and do it. Maybe we can catch up with the uh, caravan if we turn right back around. Hara, the lonely hollow buildings of Hara are an oppressive reminder of what happens when the aquifers go dry. The decaying structures and empty streets have been given over to wind and desert, desert rodents. Nameless, a reclusive hermit, unbothered by the world. The Aramite. Hera is even quieter, quieter than you imagined, its tall buildings crowding the horizon like so many giant tombstones. Up ahead, a solitary figure sits cross-legged by the roadside, the only other living person all the way out here. Blessed paths, traveler. Oh, that locket. It brings back memories. I haven't seen that since Pachenko. It was your mother's? I see. Your mother, she founded the circle in Pachenko, as did I. You must already know, to come all the way out here. I imagine you've heard unflattering tales. I'm not the person I was back then, not in name or character. But the circle certainly led to who I am now. Our mission was simple, to fill the world with beauty. Unfortunately, this world has a way of making simple things complex. I tried to keep the circle whole, to keep profits from entering the equation. Our art was supposed to enrich the world, not make us rich. Tell me more. Trade, commerce, and savvy brought Pachenko to life, filled it with wonder. For a time, that was enough. The trouble began when the circle set its sights on Hara. Once a metropolis, Hara's water all but dried up, leaving it in sharp decline. Population dwindling, we imagined that with a large investment, Hara could be restored, and the circle's sphere of influence could expand. So we struck a deal with the Rilkers. Your mom and young Marcus were its strongest proponents. Of course, the Rilkers had no intention of saving Hara. What they wanted were rare metals buried deep in the earth below the city. They threw out the stragglers, and what remained of Hara was stripped, gutted. But not before they paid us handsomely. That was when I knew we'd gone too far. Greed, excess, I left when the founders turned on one another. I gave up my possessions, my relationships, even my own name. Your mother, she did the same to an extent. Conflict made us seem to seek new lives, unforeseen. These aren't the answers you wanted, I imagine. I hope you've lived long enough for that to feel familiar. Bless your path. He's not wrong. You've grown accustomed to the challenges inherent to uncovering the past. Heading deeper into Hara, you wonder what else the silent remains of the city might have seen over the years, and how, in the end, all that's left are mysteries. Alright, so, we can go here. So if we go here and then here, we might... Oh, wait, I don't want to... Uh... We might be forever behind the caravan now, but we'll see. 
Your arrival is slowed by the steady flow of families and merchants making their way to Clifton. Many of the neighboring communities did not have access to the resources to rebuild. Though the atmosphere on the road is solemn, the market is bustling once again. Here's to Moss. The market is vibrant, with only a hint of previous landslides. Spotted birds squawk indignantly from their cages, and the smell of cinnamon wafts with the prevailing wind. One of the stalls sells paintings, and the dramatic style is oddly familiar. Hi, can I interest you in a portrait of a silk weaver? Oh, it's my first customer. Please remember who I am. Yeah, I remember you. I moved to Clifton to see how new audiences responded to my work. Hopefully they weren't just being polite. Everyone from Pachenko was so nice about my leaving. I can't believe I was being just being anxious for nothing. Or do they secretly hate me? Well, Marcos is not happy. I don't know how I'll repay Marcus for all the money she spent on my move, but I can try. Mm, I wanted to thank you for buying my painting and not running away screaming during other conversations. Um, I'm gonna do that. And then this. Since you travel a lot, maybe one of the smaller paintings will be easier for you to carry around. I have a series of square landscapes here. You say goodbye to Tomas, who seems to have grown into his own ambitions. At least, he doesn't shrink back when he talks to other customers. Okay, we've got a painting. There's another listen. But... We'll just trade these out. Got to get some stuff is the thing. Oh, you've got stuff. Bukumborum. A bored child races your truck on her bike. A number of townsfolk watch as your truck passes by but the distant sound of a train approaching is of far more interest to the residents of Bukumboro. Matilda, she's finishing the service. Oh, let's, uh, dog. Dog days. The dusty main road doesn't seem to hold much interest to thunder until your passing scares a lizard from its sunny spot. Hello, puppy. Arf, arf, arf. Yes, that's right. Arf, arf, arf. I can speak dog. Awoo! Good dog. Thunder takes off down the road after it, barking in excitement. Spending time with Thunder makes you feel less fatigued. Big same. So, Miriam passed away. A recent arrival, she found herself right at home, befriending neighbors and uplifting the community. She will be sorely missed. Matilda will hold a service in the town center. Morning, Miriam. The funeral takes place on a sunny day, so Miriam's weeping admirers have to provide the rain. After Matilda's final words, the guests shuffle into Miriam's old chocolate store to drink and feast, but Matilda invites you for a walk. I didn't lie to Miriam, you know. All of her readings were joyful. I saw the whale, an oak tree, even the old unbroken comet. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe I'm just no good at sadness. I read that we were supposed to have rain today, but I even managed to chase the clouds away. I guess that's not a horrible quality to have. We're going to need a lot of hope around this place. A lot of new people are coming in by railroad. I think Bukumboro will be okay. There's got to be more like people, more people like Miriam in the world that want to come here. If the railroad wasn't reopened, then maybe I would have never met Miriam. We got to take care of it, no matter what. Sorry, I just. I just miss her a lot. She was such a nice person, especially the kids. Let me cry a bit, okay? You let Matilda cry on your jacket. You also loan her your handkerchief. She seems grateful for your assuring presence. And I like having that discard, but she does not get me chocolate. Alexis is setting up a new stall. Unexpectedly, you pick out a familiar face among the crowd. It's none other than Alexis. Based on their stall, complete with a bright new umbrella, they appear to have bounced back. My most trusted customer. Yes, the rumors are true. I'm afraid I've left Clifton behind me. The competition isn't so fierce in Bukumboro, but that won't be the case in a few weeks. Oh, listen to me ramble. How does Bartow fare? Perhaps you should move too. It's a thought. I'm trying to build a proper safety net out here for myself. Something that can endure a disaster or two. I'm having trouble finding sustainable growers around here too. Many don't, play, many don't take proper care of their bees. Alright, so... I guess I can just do this, right? Because you have to respond. Cool. Oh, all that ruckus over there is about a funeral. That's a shame. I was wondering why my sales were slow. You wish Alexis luck, but don't think they'll need it. For whatever quirks they might have, they're remarkably adaptable to circumstances good and bad. That's someone you can look forward to doing business with. Look at all those nuts. Many nuts. Chatter. Move on. So, the caravan is probably on the way home. I could go to Anka, but I don't think I have anything. Aldhurst, you've got... Like, I don't know that I can do much there. Rimina is there. Old Murray. Anka. What do I have? I don't have very much. I need more. But... I think I'm going to have a hard time with that. Desert Oasis, we've got that person. Old Murray is fish land. All right, let's go to Alder Aldhurst and give it a shot. Um, you approach a welcoming rest stop off the side of the road. Travelers sit around telling stories. Moon Woman entrances the group with a story about being driven out of Rimina. You listen and learn, preparing for the road ahead. Choose a card to gain a single-use accord. Um, how about... Well, no, because it will still cause a fail on one side. So that's not really doing me any good. Um, how about...
The central plaza bustles with activity, though you see, sense some underlying tension as you pass an assortment of tents and makeshift shelters. Shops stand open, but don't seem entirely welcoming. Tosudo. He's taking his pickles to the mountain, to the, like, uh, top of a hill or something. Proud Pickler. The shelves in Tosudo's store rise almost 20 feet, filled with car jars of colorful foods. He waves from a rolling ladder. The supply here could feed a small town for months. I feel like he's probably not feeding a small town for months. I'll pickle anything you can imagine here, anything. Look at these shelves and call me a liar. Yeah, I don't have diamonds, my guy. Can't know if you like it till you try it. Trying out new things is an important part of life. one. I don't know if I can make it to three positives. Carrots, cucumbers, if it fits in a jar, I'll pickle it. Doesn't fit in a jar, I'll make it fit. This wasn't my idea, believe it or not. Folks cried out, Tosudo, sell those amazing pickles! Hmm. Give this flavor a spin. It'll knock your socks off. Well, there goes that. Never has he liked me. What's this I hear about an old man becoming a pickle? Preposterous. Please, no such nonsense in my shop. Okay, whatever. Nope. I don't have enough squares to, to try to talk to you. Rimina, Kaboro, Anka. Still don't have a road to Purse Array. This is an old Murray. Through day 28. I don't have enough cars to do that, so it's back to Bartow. I don't know that I've gotten enough things to keep Bartow on the route. Elias and I may be moving to Bukumboro. Hey! Um, oh, it's not, uh, it's not that hay. It's a different hay. The deadline. As you disembark from your long, tiresome journey, Nadine covertly pulls you aside. I've spoken with the other members of the caravan, and we've reached a decision. You're not going to like it. Sorry, but ultimately our quorum felt that Barto isn't just isn't pulling its weight anymore. It doesn't make a sense for us financially or logistically to keep it on the route. And I'll be honest, pressure from the Rilkers was a strong factor too. The only reason we've held on for so long is because of an old promise I made to your mom. But with her gone and with the town in decline, I really can't justify it to the others any longer. I'm sorry. It's nothing personal. I hope you'll understand. Looking into Nadine's eyes, you can tell that she genuinely seems to be sad about giving you such terrible news, but it still doesn't lessen the blow. After a moment of awkward silence, Nadine leaves you alone to grieve. Samuel, he looks free. Very free. The roadhouse less traveled. Samuel looks a little listless as he sweeps the roadhouse steps. It smells like something delicious is cooking inside, but he appears to be alone. Slow day. Been a lot of them lately. Might have settled down some, but who knows if it'll ever get back to normal around here. Guess it gives me more time to sit and think.
lately I've been thinking about how quiet it's been around here and how much more quiet it's going to be when the caravan stops coming around. Pretty sure it's getting about to be time for me to move on to greener pastures. It's no pleasant prospect, but I can't see as any other option. Sure did make a lot of good memories in this town, I'll say. Gonna miss it big time. This is where I met your mom and dad, after all. My bad. I can't imagine the ruminations of this old-timer are too exciting to you. But it's just... Boy, am I gonna miss Bartow. Nothing else. At least I can say the old bucket list was pretty well crossed off over the years. The thought of uh, the thought of Bartow without Samuel is a strange one, but judging by the roadhouse's empty tables, he doesn't seem to have much say in the matter. Elias is currently in a state of shock. Not too surprising. You find Elias at the coffee shop. His face slack-jawed and pale. He barely even looks up to meet your gaze as you approach the counter. I take it you heard about Nadine's news? Yeah, me too. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. You know I care about the store just as much as you do. Maybe even more. But this doesn't have to be the end, does it? I mean, you've learned to fend for yourself out there, haven't you? Contrary to popular belief, it is possible for us to survive without the great Nadine and her all-powerful caravan. Isn't it? I don't know if your heart's still in this place. I'm not sure mine is anymore. You know, I'm distracted. I, I just can't believe the caravan won't re really won't be coming back. Yep, bonding over grief. I don't know, maybe it's time to start looking elsewhere, joining you on some of these adventures I've been hearing so much about. You rush around the corner to give Elias a hug. Nothing would make you happier than having your oldest, most cherished friend as a partner and travel companion. Just keep that. So I guess we unload, sell the rest of the stock, and then move on, probably. Now that the caravan has cut ties with Bartow, the store's future is looking grim. Perhaps it's time for a change. If Mom was able to create a whole new life for herself, surely you can too. You and Elias pack up your things and head out, running your hands over the empty shelves as you exit Mom's store for the very last time. All right, looks like maybe we ended up in Pachenko. Your new shop looks much like the old one, only this one is filled to the hilt with merchandise and eager customers. Elias runs the register while you restock the well-picked-over shelves. We're running out of my famous key rings again. Mind grabbing another box from the back? Thanks. Turns out I was right about those things. 
People don't really do love reminders of where they've been. Speaking of which, I've been thinking a lot about Barto lately. All these years later, do you still think leaving was the right thing to do? here in Pachenko. Our stock is selling like hotcakes and I've got the best partner in the whole world. But for some reason, my mind keeps wandering back to the hard times. Back to when nothing was a sure thing. Working my tail off at the coffee shop, fumbling my way through a recorder solo at Samuel's show. Remember that day your mom had to pry us apart after we fought over Laka? Damn thing got us into trouble even then, long before we uncovered the truth about her history with the Circle. Oh boy, we were at each other's throats. I thought for sure that was going to be the end of our friendship right there, then and there. We've certainly come a long way since then, haven't we? Elias tends to the last of the day's customers, then exhausted, he flips the sign to closed and locks the door. Together, the two of you watch the sun go down over the beautiful Pachenko sky. So that's Signs of the Sojourner. This is, I think, the second full run that I've done of the game. And in the first run that I did, we stayed in Bartow, and Bartow stayed on the caravan route. But I didn't meet the nameless Circle co-founder and I got farther into Old Marais, the fishing town, but I didn't kind of meet any of the Rilkers or like change policy in any way. It seems like you have to do a really good job and really focus if you want to go deep down production dogs. Um, if you really want to go down any of the um, narrative tracks. These are definitely some of the best credits because they have dogs and cats in them. And that looks like a panda bear-ish. Yeah, you definitely can't be all things to all people, which makes sense. Um, it'd be fun to do a run just really focusing on fish town, like on learning um, diamonds and... I guess it's mostly diamonds and squares, I guess. Um, thanks for playing. Thanks for a great game. So yeah, I think you could probably do four or five runs of this and be singing new stuff um, for each of those. I don't know how, mu how many endings there are in total. Um, I would guess five or more, because there's Stay in Bartow, everything is fine. There's probably go to Pachenko. I think there's a, like, leave Elias entirely and go live somewhere else ending, because I remember hearing about that from somebody on Waypoint Radio. Um, I think this was Austin Walker talking about his one of his runs. And I would guess that there's a an ending where you go and, like, join the Rilkers or you end up in Fishtown or something. There may be an ending where you re reconnect with your dad whoever the dad is. I don't know if the dad is supposed to be that nameless character or somebody else. Um, you know, if there is a... It seems like there's supposed to be a dad out there somewhere. Um, so that's that. It is only two, but this would be a good... This is a good place to do a break because then I can cut the video up and do this as Signs of the Sojourner 2 and then the next one will be Hard, hard Space Shipbreaker number one because um, I'm going to have to split this VOD into two, because um, that's how video production works with the tools that I have. So I'm going to go on break and run a quick ad, hang on, and when we come back, I will start Hard, Spa Hard Space Shipbreaker, which is a little bit of a mouthful. Um, we're going to do a new run, so you won't have to have seen anything 
I've heard good, very good things about the story, and I think the mechanics will be interesting to show slash talk through, because I think it's the kind of a game that would be really meditative, but I'm interested in talking about the narrative part, and meditative games are often not so much my thing, or the games that people talk about being meditative, I tend to, rather than meditate to them, I put them on and then also listen to a podcast or watch something on YouTube. Um, so instead of one of those things, I will have talking with chat. So this has been Signs of the Sojourner, which is very fun. I got it, I think, from itch.io. Maybe it was on, like, in early access at some point. It's available now. It's very cool. I don't think it's that expensive. The communication deck building thing, I think, is very cool. And honestly, I just love when I can find a game by an independent developer and really, really connect with it. Because I know that if I can sell, like, five copies of a game by an independent developer, I might be paying someone's groceries for the week. Um, you know, or half of their grocery bill or something. Um, depending on the size of the dev team or whatever. Um, being able to make a meaningful, if not huge, difference um, by spotlighting and championing um, a game is really fun. You know, uh, From Software doesn't need to sell any more copies of Elden Ring. Like, they're doing just fine. But if I shout from the rooftops about something that doesn't have a lot of promotional support, then that's very fun. Yeah, the art is very cool. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to check to see what this team is working on next. I think they, because it was in early access, this game is actually listed as like 2019 or a 2020 release date when I had played it a bit before that, maybe. Um, so that's that. I'm going to go on break. We'll be back with a game about labor in space and breaking ships. Be right back.